And we are back with part two of Tishba of 2020. This is from the live recording on July 29th, 2020. Uh, for some reason, the formats of YouTube and GodTube are just not taking it from the complete one um, one part recording. So I'm having to break this up. So uh, bear with me on this. I'm going to continue with part two. Chapter 1, the vision of Isaiah, son of Amos, which he saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem in the days of Uzziah, Jotham, Ahaz, and Hezekiah, king of Judah. Hezekiah was the king at the time of, of the southern kingdom of Judah. And during that time frame, um, the, the 12 tribes were not together. Um, what happened... What happened um, when Solomon, Solomon died, um, the kingdom actually split into two. Um, Rehoboam actually just decided to go with what the younger generation had. He had no respect for the elders, and um, he actually lost 10 of the tribes who went off with Jeroboam to the northern kingdom uh, known as Israel. Just a, a real short, short history of this. So what was left in the southern kingdom, uh, known as Judah, was reigned by Rehoboam. So all of the kings of the northern kingdom were bad, and they got carried off into captivity from Assyria in 722 BC. So you know the southern kingdom actually knew this happened to their brethren. Um, you would have thought they would have learned from history and learned from lessons. And this is why I always say, you know, we need to not repeat history. We need to learn from history so we don't repeat it again. So it's very important to preserve that history. Otherwise, we are doomed to repeat it. So, and actually, the Southern Kingdom did the, the very same exact things. They were actually uh, doing idolatry. They were they were doing things right within the within the temple. Um, so it was very you know not a very good thing. And God just had so much patience for His people. He loved His people. He didn't want this to happen. And He sent prophet after prophet, and they just ignored or you know abused the prophets. And finally, God just had enough. Um, the other thing that they were not doing was was allowing the land to rest at the proper Shabbat times. They were they were just not even they were not even um, honoring the Shabbat. So the the land did get seventy years for the for uh, for the entire time that it wasn't being rested. It got its rest because the people were carried off into captivity for those seventy years. So the land did get its rest. But it's not the way God intended it for the people, but they did not listen to him. So. A nation sick with sin, listen, heavens, and hear earth, for Adonai has spoken. Sons I have raised and brought up, but they have rebelled against me. The ox knows its owner, and the donkey its manger, but Israel does not know. My people do not understand. Boy, a sinful nation. A people weighed down with iniquity, offspring of evildoers, sons dealing corruptly. They have abandoned Adonai. They have despised Israel's holy one. They have turned backwards. Where will you be struck again as you stray away more and more? The whole head is sick. The whole heart sinks from foot to the head. There is no soundness. Wounds, bruises, and raw sores, not pressed, nor bandaged, nor softened with oil. Your land is desolate. Your cities are burned with fire. Your field, strangers devour it. In your presence, a desolation overthrown by strangers, so the daughter of Zion is left. As a suka in a vineyard, as a lodge in a garden of cucumbers, as a besieged city, unless Adonai Sabaoth has had left us a small remnant, we would have been as Sodom. We would have been as Gomorrah. So we know what happened with Sodom and Gomorrah. They were completely destroyed. Hear the word of Adonai, you, you rulers of Sodom. Give ear to the Torah of our God, you people of Gomorrah. Worthless offerings. <clears throat> For what is it to me, the multitude of your sacrifice, says Adonai. I am full of burnt offerings of rams and fat of fed animals. I have no delight in the blood of bulls or of lambs or he goats. When you come to appear before me, 
Who has required this at your hand, trampling my corpse? Bring no more worthless offering. Incense is an abomination to me. New moon and Shabbat, the calling of convocations. I cannot endure it. Iniquity with solemn assembly, your new moons and your festivals my soul hates. They are a burden to me. I am weary to bear them. When you spread out your hands, I will hide my eyes from you. When you multiply prayers, I will not hear. Your hands are full of blood. And as I mentioned in the video, what was happening here is that in this pro in this prophecy through Isaiah, Isaiah, is, you know, God is basically saying, I've had it with your ceremony because it means nothing. It is not coming from the heart. You're not doing any of, of my statutes. You're not following any of my commandments. You do what you want to do. And then you come and you want to worship me and you think I'm going to hear from you. No, I've had enough of this. Don't even bother. And he's to the point, God is to the point to say, you know, this is a stench to my nostrils, actually. I, I've had enough of this. You either come back to me wholly or don't, you know, completely or don't bring your ceremony to me because it means nothing to you. So why should it, why should I listen to this? The next, the next. Uh, segment is scarlet sins of snow. Wash and make yourself clean. Put away the evil of your deeds from before my eyes. So once again, God is God is actually telling the people what they need to do. He doesn't want them to to meet destruction. He's giving them the way to come back to Him and and make things right. Cease to do evil. Learn to do good. Seek justice. Relieve the oppressed, defend the orphan, plead for the widow. Come now, let us reason together, says Adonai. So your sins be like scarlet, they will be as white as snow. Though so they be red like crimson, they will become like wool. If you are willing and obey, you will eat the good of the land. But if you refuse and rebel, you will be devoured with the sword for the mouth. Of Adonai has spoken. So, and this is exactly what happened because they just chose not to listen. Restore the faithful city, how the faithful city became a harlot. She once was full of justice, righteousness lodged in her. And now, murderers, your silver has become dross. And I think that that actually means it's worthless. It's like a piece of rubbish, um, it doesn't mean anything. Your wine diluted by water, your princes are rebellious and friends with thieves. Everyone loves a bribe and chases the rewards. They do not defend the orphan, nor does the widow's case come to them. Therefore, says the Lord Adonai Sabaoth, the mighty one of Israel, boy, I will get relief from my foes and avenge myself on my enemies, and I will turn my hand on you. Purge away your dross and remove all your alloy. I will restore your judges that as at first, your counselors as at the start. Afterwards, you will be called city of righteousness, faithful city. Zion will be redeemed with justice. Her repentance with righteousness. But there will be a crushing of transgressors and sinners together. Forsaking Adonai, they will be consumed, for they will be ashamed of the sacred oath that you desired and embarrassed because of the garden that you have chosen. For you will be like an oak of withering leaf like a garden that has no water so the strong will become tender and his work like a spark both will burn together and no one will quench them so that was isaiah chapter one so you can see the warnings the warnings the warnings a hundred years before the first temple was destroyed now, Lamentations, the Sephardic Jews actually read the book of Job, which is a very interesting book. Um, uh, there's there's a lot of, you know, a lot to be said um, with the story of Job and how God actually um, addresses Job as, you know, when he's going through everything that he has gone through, when the devil sifted him and, and you know, and, and the head was lifted away from Job. That he did not turn against God. Um, he actually, and was later, as, as we know, Job was actually restored even more than what he had. 
but um, in general, most read the Book of Lamentations, and Lamentations actually, um, the word Lamentations means mourning. So, and this is found in the Messianic Jewish Family Bible. It is found in a section known as the Ketuvim, which is known as the Writings. So it's a little bit different than the Gentile the Gentile Bible. Um, Lamentations is actually found in it's actually considered one of the books of poetry, actually, in, in the Gentile Bible. So um, it is felt that Jeremiah is the author of the majority of the book of, of Lamentations. Um, he witnessed um, the destruction, as I had mentioned earlier, of the temple. He had a scribe that actually did, actually was kind of like a secretary for him at times, uh, known as Baruch. I did not mention that on the other um, on the other videos, but um, yeah, he he did have someone that actually um, wrote for him at times. So, um, Lamentations, the Song of Jerusalem's Droning's. How lonely sits the city, and this is at, this is after the fact, and and what has ha had happened to the first temple, and and he is actually writing this and witnessing and and talking about Jerusalem and you know what has happened to Jerusalem and and the people. How lonely sits the city once so full of people. She who was once great among the nations has become like a widow. The princess among the provinces has become a forced laborer. Bitterly she weeps in the night. Her tears are on her cheeks. Among all her lovers, there is no one to comfort her. All her friends have betrayed her. They have become her enemies. Judah is gone into exile. Under affliction and great servitude, she dwells among the nations. She finds no resting place. All her pursuers have overtaken her. In the midst of her distress, the roads to Zion mourn, for no one comes to her moedim, meaning appointed time in Hebrew is the moedim. All her gates are desolate, her kohanim groan, her maidens grieve, she is in bitter anguish, her foes have become her masters, her enemies are at ease, for Adonai has afflicted her because of her many transgressions, her children have gone away, as captives before the adverse adversary. All her splendor has departed from the daughter of Zion. Her princes are like stags they, that find no pasture. They have fled without strength before the pursuer in the days of her affliction and her wandering. Jerusalem remembers all the treasures that were hers from the days of old. When her people fell into enemy hands, there was no one to help her. Her enemies saw her and mocked at her destruction. Jerusalem has greatly sinned, therefore she has become in Nida. All who honored her buys her, for they have seen her nakedness. She just got bruised and turned away. Her uncleanness was in her skirts. She did not consider her future. Her demise is astonishing. There was no one to comfort her. He said that quite more than once. No one was there to help her. Um, is what he's saying. And then I see my affliction, for the enemy has triumphed. The enemy has stretched his hand over all her treasures. She even saw nations enter her sanctuary. Those you had commanded not to enter your congregation. All her people groan as they seek bread. They traded their treasures for food to keep themselves alive. Look, Adonai, and see, for I have become despised. Is it nothing to you, all you who pass by on the road? Look and see. Is anyone suffering like my suffering that was brought on me, that Adonai has, has afflicted in the day of his fierce anger? From on high he sent fire into my bones, and it overcame them. He spread out a net for my feet. He turned me back. He made me desolate, faint all the day long. My transgressions are, are bound into a yoke woven together by his hand. They have come upon my mouth, and he has stopped my strength. The Lord delivered me over to those I cannot withstand. The Lord has rejected all the mighty ones in my midst. He has summoned an assembly against me to crush my young men in a wine press. 
the Lord has trampled. The virgin daughter of Judah, over these things I weep, my eyes overflow with water. For, for far from me is a comforter, she may refresh my soul. My children are desolate because the enemy has prevailed. Zion spreads out her hands. There is no one to comfort her. Adonai has decreed against Jacob. Those surrounding him have become his foes. Jerusalem has become Nita in their eyes. Adonai is righteous, for I have rebelled against his word. Hear now, all peoples, look at my suffering. My maidens and my young men have gone into captivity. I call to my lovers. They deceived me. My Kohanim and my elders perished in the city when they sought food to keep themselves alive. Look, Adonai, for I am in distress. My stomach turns, my heart pounds within me, for I have been very rebellious. Outside the sword bereaves, in the house it is like death. They have heard me groaning. There is no one to comfort me. All my enemies heard of my distress. They rejoice that you have done it. May you bring about the day that you proclaimed so that so they may become like me. Let all their evil come before you. Deal with them as you dealt with me because all of my transgressions. For my groans are many and my heart is faint. Chapter 2 is Lament for Zion. He just, this book is a book of complete mourning. How my Lord is clouded over the daughter of Zion in his anger. He hurled down the splendor of Israel from heaven to earth. He has not remembered his foot stole, stole in the day of his anger. My Lord has mercil mercilessly swallowed up all the dwellings of Jacob. He threw, them, he threw down the strongholds of the daughter of Judah in his fury. He knocked to the ground and humiliated the kingdom and its princes. In fierce anger, he has cut off every horn of Israel. He has withdrawn his right hand from from before the enemy, he blazed against Jacob like raging fire, devouring everything around. He bent his bow like an enemy, set his right hand like a foe, and killed all so pleasant to the eye. In the tent of the daughter of Zion, he has poured out his wrath like fire. My Lord is like an enemy. He has swallowed up Israel. He swallowed up all her citadels, destroyed her fortifications, and multiplied mourning and moaning for the daughter of Judah. Like a garden, he laid waste his dwelling, destroyed his appointed meeting place. And I has caused Moed and Shabbat to be forgotten in Zion. In the indignation of his anger, he spurned King and Kohen. The, the Lord rejected his altar, despised his sanctuary. He delivered the walls of her citadels into the hand of the enemy. They raised a shout in the house of Anani, as if, as if it were the day of a Moed. And then I resolved to destroy the wall of the of the daughter of Zion. He stretched out a measuring line. He did not withdraw his hand from destroying. He caused rampart and wall to lament together. They languished away. Her gates sank into the ground. Her bars he destroyed and shattered. Her kings and princes are among nations. There is no more Torah. Also, her prophets find no visions from Adonai. The elders of the daughter of Zion sit upon the ground in silence. They threw dust on their heads and girded themselves with sackcloth. The maidens of Jerusalem have bowed their heads to the ground. My eyes are filled with tears. My stomach is in torment. My heart is poured out on the ground over the destruction of the daughter of my people. As young children and infants language in the city squares, they say to their mothers, where is grain and wine? As they faint like a wounded soldier in the city squares, as they live, as their lives ebb away in their mother's bosom. How can I admonish you to what can I compare you, O daughter of Jerusalem, to what can I liken you so that I might console you, O virgin daughter of Zion? For your wound is as deep as the sea. Who can heal you? Your prophets have seen for you false and worthless visions. Now, these are the prophets of the kings. These aren't the prophets that, that God had sent. They were listening to the so-called other prophets um, that were actually giving false reports and, and actually giving false reports against, um, against what Jeremiah had actually came. And they were, they were telling the king total opposite things. So the king really wasn't listening to Jeremiah. He like his ears tickled, like, you know, people of today, 
like to hear the tickling of the ears and don't want to hear the truth. Um, this is exactly what happened, and it led to the total destruction of the kingdom. They did not expose your iniquity, so as to restore your captivity, rather, they have seen for you false and worthless oracles. All that passed your way, clap their hands at you, they hissed and shake their heads at the daughter of Jerusalem. Is this the city in which they said the perfection of beauty, the joy of the whole earth? All your enemies opened their mouth wide against you. They hissed and gnashed their teeth and say, we have swallowed her up. Surely this is the day we have waited for. We have lived to see it. And I has done what he had planned. He has fulfilled his word that he commanded from days of old. He has overthrown you without pity. He enabled the enemy to gloat over you. He has exalted the horn of your foes. Their heart cried out to the Lord, O oh, wall of the daughter of Zion, let the tears run down like a river day and night. Give yourself no relief, your eyes no rest. Arise, cry out in the night at the beginning of the watches. Pour out your heart like water before the presence of the Lord. Lift up your hands to him for the light of your children who faint from hunger at the head of every street. Look at a man, is there with whom you have dealt so severely? Should women eat their offspring, their healthy newborn infants? Should Cohen and prophet be slain in the sanctuary of the Lord? On the ground in the streets, like both young and old, my maidens and my young men have fallen by the sword. You slew them in the day of your anger. You slaughter them without pity. As on a Moed day, you summon against me terrors on every side. On the day of the wrath of Adonai, no one escaped or survived. Those whom I bore and raised, my enemy has destroyed. And, and I'm going to actually pause this here and come back with chapter three and also part three.